So the particles of Prem, where they come from, those dust particles that we are all eager for, that we are all praying for, they come from Shimati Radhika. Oh no, maybe not that should be our goal, because who can directly get the dust from Shimati Radhika? We are just praying to those who are sitting close to her lotus feet. We want the dust of the Dasis. We pray for this. This is my hope. So we stay with the uh, Tika, the commentary of Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj. And he says that this song is actually the three, the three paragraphs of this song is one of the hearts uh, felt prayers of our Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And he says the Gaudiya Vaishnavas that surrender to Sriman Mahaprabhu's lotus feet have greater love for Sri Radha. And therefore these three padis or three verses are most beneficial to them working on them like reviving nectar elixirs. They have greater love to Sri Radha because she is the Swamini. She is our boss. In Bunge Mandi, we always get these nice uh, <laughs> bags and love is the boss. Swamini is my boss. <laughs> So all Gaudiya Vaishnavas, whether they may say it or not, if they have taken shelter of the lotus feet of Chaitanya, then they will be Dasis of Srimati Radhika. And so when we are meditating on the particles of frame that come from the lotus feet dust of our Guru Varga, of our teachers, of our Guru Dev, then this will be like reviving elixir. That's so nice. Elixir of revival. That means when my bhakti feels a little bit dry, a little bit uh, not so much alive or not nourished, then we can sing these songs. We can pray even to these songs. Because actually, if we go deep, these lines are the dust of the Lotus mouth of Srila Naratam Dastaka, who is Dasi of Chimati Radhika. So we are not so far away. We are actually, by singing this song, by meditating, reading, or hearing about it, we are getting some prema particles in our hearts. And uh, we know that Naratam Dastaka is such a special soul he was called and predicted by Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu went into this river Padma and he was calling once in a town close by the river Padma in a village. Naratam! At that time Naratam had not even taken birth and all the, the associates, all the friends like Gadhata and Nityananda and all those who were with Mahaprabhu, they were thinking, oh, oh Mahaprabhu is in a special mood today. He's calling with such a high emotion this devotee's name. Who is this Naratam? And uh, then Mahaprabhu revealed to Nityananda that will be a very great devotee after, soon after he will come. And I will leave my prema, my love for Shimati Radhika here for him to bring to the whole, whole world. And we see now the songs of Naratam Das Thakwa have become so famous and so deeply appreciated by all the Vaishnavas. We are singing them every day. Shiguru Charana Padma and this Shri Radhika Charana was also one of the favorite songs 
ob Bhaktivinoda Thakur, ob Narayan Maharaj, ob Shiva Prabhupada. So we are very, very happy that uh, we can get the Maha Maha Mahavanis of their of their memories of their uh, meditations on the lotus feet of Shrimati Radhika. And this is like I said, the dust. It's our mercy dust, and we are living from this mercy dust. And it's our reviving nectar. Shila Naratandas Thakun Mahashai first says, Shri Radhika Chara Narenu, Bhushana Koriyatanu, Anayase Pabe Giridari. By accepting Shri Radharani's foot dust as the ornaments of the body, Giridari Shri Krishna will be easily attainable. Oh, why is this so? Because this is not just an ordinary foot dust. These are golden, golden sparks of frame. And when Krishna sees that the Dasis, they are carrying the golden dust particles of his beloved as their eyeliner, as their veils, as their kanchuli, as their body decorations. Because actually, in the spiritual world, all everything is made from Shimati Radhika's prema or Mohan. So the Mandaris, they wear all her garlands, all her leftovers, dresses and garlands. And so even when he is smelling this, he thinks it's his Swamini. He is so attracted to this. And he's asking them, have you seen my Swamini? No. I have not seen her, but I can smell her. Oh, this is worse because she was just embracing us before we left to pick the flowers. You are not lucky today, Krishna. But maybe if you chant her holy name, she will come. So like this, the loving pastimes and the loving games of Radha and Moha are unlimited and the lotus dust of Shimati Radhika's foot dust or lo for lotus feet is very, very alive. It's a, not like a, like a sand corn that we can find on the street or it's a, it's a living prema particle that is there to bless all those who are wanting to serve. So I feel also blessed that I could, by the mercy of, of all of you and Gurudev's mercy, meditate today deeply in the last days when I read this again and again. What are these particles of prema that are coming from Shimati Radhika's lotus feet? They are all, I feel they are all her loving moods towards her Mohan. And so to catch these loving moods, we need the mercy of Sri Guru Dev because he is full of these moods. And later on, also, it is revealed that the only way to get the dust of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika is to listen and to serve those who are living in this prema to her. Those dasis who are more developed were already in the lila, active. For myself, I aspire to be in the Leela. I try to, you know, connect myself to the Leela. I try to feel Shimati Radhika's uh, love and I would like to serve her. And I'm, I'm practicing this remembrance of all the, of the, all the beautiful games they have in Vrindavan and what kind of service. Gurudev has revealed to me is my service. And that is oftentimes it has something to do with the lotus feet. It is oftentimes that we are serving by uh, fanning the lotus feet and we are massaging the lotus feet. Or we look how Guru, 
Guru Manjari is doing it and Rupa Manjari. And if we are lucky, we will get some chance to serve and get some remnants of their service. So this is the, the meditation as a Dasi. And here, if we uh, think I am a sadhaka in this world, I just want to uh, meditate how to be kind and loving, like Shrimati Radhika is kind and loving with all living entities. She is calling us back home and calling us into her service. And this is a great kindness. So I should try to become also kind like her. <laughs> And whenever there is something in my heart that is not so kind, then I just try to dust this out. I try to transform any kind of anger and any kind of negativity into positive feelings. And then what happens? By accepting Shiradharani's foot dust, as the ornaments of the body, Iridari, Shri Krishna, will be easily attainable. So when we are going this way, we are going directly. We don't have to think too much. We only have to feel and to open our, our hearts to what is coming from the Dasis. And the Dasis have left a lot of mercy. And they are living in the mercy and they are calling us also because they say, come, come, come. We need some more help here. There's a lot of service to the Lotus Feet of Shrimati Radhika. She always likes to be in ecstasy in all her feelings to Mohan. So we have to protect also her Lotus Feet when she's walking to meet him. Ah, we have to dust the path where she's walking. And we have to put some nice flower petals there. There's so much service to the lotus feet of Shrimati Radhi. So now Baba is explaining that uh, the scriptures, they all explain and they give this hint that the only means to attain Sri Krishna is prema. In scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam, we find a lot of examples of the power of the foot dust of the saints in bringing the attainment of devotion or the attainment of God. The great sage Bharata told King Rahugana, this is now uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam, the story of a, a king who, who was explaining that. Uh, uh, the great sage who told to the king, yeah, you think you are the king, but actually, without being sprinkled by the foot dust of the saints, penances or the performance of Vedic duties, donations of food, charitable building of houses, studying the Vedas, or worship of water, fire, or the sun will not help to attain the truth about God. So explaining to this king that you think you are the great person and you are doing a lot of good things, but beware, if you don't have the mercy of one of the great holy persons who are really connected, you will not be free of your repetition of birth and death and being, uh, you know, going to higher planets, coming down again. So only the dust of a holy person can help us. And another example is given. As long as one is not showered by the foot dust of the saints that are totally free from material identification, no one can become aware of the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. All personal faults and mischief will automatically go away by becoming fixed in these lotus feet. A saint is a great, is great according to the amount of his prema. 
Therefore, we must understand that the greater the love of the saint is, the greater is the power of his foot dust in giving or bestowing devotion. So someone who is living in Prem and is serving Prem, Prema Mai Shirati, they have the power to give Prem. Or like our Guru often says, one who is connected, they can connect. And all the scriptures, the different, different scriptures give examples of this. We cannot reach it by our own endeavors. We need the mercy of a, of a very, very pure soul who is already living in the dust of mercy. Shiradirani has the greatest love. Therefore, there is no comparison in the power of her foot dust in bestowing devotion and thus causing the subjugation of Krishna. Krishna is attracted only by pure love, by selfless pray, mothers. This is something that he himself is searching all the time, and she, she Radhika, has the highest amount, the most weight of prema, of love, of divine love is in her. And she can give it freely if she wants. And her foot dust is therefore the most powerful sprinkling of gold prema particles on our heads if we can receive it through her dasis. And what does it mean for Krishna even? He wants to be a Dasi, so he can, can come close to Srimati Radhika. That's how powerful is the love of Srimati Radhika. It will make him a Dasi. And then, like Oravani was explaining so nicely, he is the supreme personality of God. Because his feature as the supreme will be in a try above, in the mood of surrender to love. And that is when he is the most, most satisfying and most attracting to Srimati Radhika. And that is when they come together, that this is so attractive to all the living beings, that from this the whole universes are created, maintained, and also invited back to come back and be part of this loving exchange. And Sri Krishna in uh, Chaitanya Taitamrita, we know that he wants to be subjugated by love. He wants to surrender to love. He wants to live in love. And he wants also to forget that he is supreme Lord. He wants to serve Srimati Radhika. He wants to serve divine love personified. And sometimes when he does have to, you know, be revived because his ecstasy is too high, then this is also very beautiful service in, in the foot dust of Srimati Radhika. We are trying to, you know, wait for this moment when our Guru Manjari will tell, now you go and learn the song from Srimati Radhika, that you can sing the song in front of her when she needs to revive uh, her beloved. <laughs> First of all, these songs are the reviving nectar elixir for us who aspire to be Darcy's and aspire to have the particles of frame on our heads and in our hearts. And then later on when perfection, when mercy has come from Srimati Radhika through the pipeline of our Guru Varga, through our Dasis, because we are the Dasis, Anu Dasis, Anu Dasis. When the time is right and when the fruits 
all right, then there will be the moment where Shrimati Radhika and Guru Manjari are giving us this possibility to revive the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is just sworn by the ecstasy of Prem that he is receiving from Maha Bhava Swarupini, you know, from the personification of ecstasy. So it's a very delicious uh, meditation, how it all is connected. We are connected, or we want to be connected, and our service is awaited, and our service is very, very sweet, because we are the sweet dasis of the sweetness in person. So sweet that Krishna tries to drink a lot, but if he gets too much honey wine, he will just fall down. And then he needs some help also. <laughs> and Shimati Radhika also. And Shila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati has written about this power of the foot dust of Shimati Radhika in Radhara Sudhanidhi. I constantly remember the foot dust of Sri Radhika whose unlimited power instantly subdues even the Supreme Person Sri Krishna, who himself cannot be easily seen even by the greatest devotees like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Shukadev Muni, Narada Muni and Bhishma. So this is the fourth verse of Radha Rasudanidhi. Vashila Prabhudananda Saraswati is explaining that uh, Shimati Radhika's Buddhas is so great that it's like a wish fulfilling cow. A wish, a kamadin, a wish fulfilling, uh, giving a mother, because the cow is our mother, and uh, Shimati Radhika is the supreme mother of all mothers. She is the universal mother. So if we surrender to her love and the service of her dasis, her beloved particles of prey, whom she sends in this, in this earth planet right now, through the Sanketan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then we can easily come into the hard feelings of being also a dasi and being uh, ready to receive the mercy by begging, crying, praying, singing. And this can happen during the day. It's not that only happens on festivals or only happens when I am in the temple or I am with my gopi. If the connection of love has been done, if the bondage of love is there, we are connected by a higher connection through heart and through the mind, which has been come saintly, the saintly mind. And then we are always feeling this connection. And we can always nourish ourselves with this inspirations and the and the services that are coming through these connections. And why is she also the uh, foot dust, a wish yielding cow? Because her love causes Krishna's complete subjugation. And on Sunday, we had this also in our Zoom that uh, why is it only that Srimati Radhika has this power of subjugation? Because with her, Mohan can completely forget himself and his Godhead. Everywhere else, he still has to be the boss. But here, he enjoys to be bossed. Or whatever. Because Shimate Radhika, she knows what is his desires. And she will create the desires in him. And she will give him this feeling of unlimited, overwhelming, uh, golden love in his heart, in his all um, 
feelings. She is, she is bossing him around with prema. And that is a positive bossing. That is a love one. That is a love game. And we know that I think it's in one of the purports of uh, Vilap Koshmangali. We hear that prema is making Krishna dance. Is making all the devotees dance, all the all the mandris are dancing, and Prema is dancing herself. So these uh, leelas that we are hearing, these are not just like some children's games. These are the highest uh, expressions of divine love, imperfection, and I really like that the rasic explanation of Gauravani. How Krishna becomes the supreme personality of Godhead. And we have heard it also that uh, Chaitanya is the highest, one of the highest expressions of love of Krishna because he comes to express his love and the glories of Srimati Radhika and of her Dasis and inviting us to come back to this kind of high. Mercy level, taking the foot dust of this ongoing lena. Because we are blessed, we are in this Kali Yuga, what can we do? We are just having to connect with our Gurudev and with this mercy that is coming. And every day we can remember, and then something, some brain particles will move us higher. Sometimes it is like going down, but it only goes down so it can go higher. It become purified. Here the question may be asked, how can the practitioner serve the food dust of Sri Raga? And how must the body be decorated by it? This Brajadam is Shirada Rani's eternal playground. With her girlfriends and with her heart's lover, Shigovinda, Shirada Rani, eternally play in Braj. Shri Prabhupada Saraswati Bhat has written, The sweet place named Sri Vrindavan is beautified by Shirada's footprints. Therefore, the dust of Braj is Sri Radhika's dust. If it was not like that, then why would associates of the Lord, like Uddhava, who was the very embodiment of transcendental knowledge, have prayed for taking birth as a blade of grass or a shrub in this red garden so that he could serve the dust? In Srimad Bhagavatam, this statement of Uddhava is found. Oh, I desire something very precious. All the vines and the herbs and the dust here in this Vrindavan are most fortunate, for they are constantly bearing the foot dust, the braja dust of the braja gopis who have given up their relatives and the path of virtue and chastity to worship Mukunda, a position which is even desired by the Vedas. A whole, will I ever be so fortunate to take my birth as one of these particles or blades of grass of Sri Vrindavan? So this is the, the attitude, our feelings, that, that should be the foundation for the desire of the footprints. With such paramount devotion, the body must be decorated with Sri Radhika's foot dust by living in Braj and serving the dust of Braj. Here, the highest devotion is desire to be set in Sri Radharani's lotus feet. 
through this Giridari is easily attained. Anayase Pave Giridari. So the uh, the condition to attain the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika is to have some appreciation of Vrinda. It's not only that we hear about it in the intellect or it's a great city where there are many temples. No, we, we serve Vrindavan's moods because all the saints are there who are meditating and dedicating their life to the Lila Smara, to the remembrance of all the past times that are going on there now. So when we come in contact with those holy persons, then we are serving Vrindavan's dust. It's not that we have to do 1,000 parikramas every day and hope that maybe one piece of dust will be there that has been touched by Shimati Radhika. This is also a nice attitude, but it takes a lot of strength and power and it keeps one often in eternal consciousness doing parikramas, looking outside. But what I found in my bhakti, to clean and purify the heart is beautiful to do parikramas. But the most powerful dust of Rindavan is found with the dasis, with the sadhus and Rindavan who have realized their swarup, their eternal relationship to Srimadhyaya and who are living in this. They are living in the dust of her love, of her lotus feet. They are living in prema bhakti. And by them, you know, going with them in one room and serving them, the prema particles of Srimati Radhika will automatically come on my head. Just like when we serve Srimati Radhika, Giridari is easily attained. Anayase Papi Giridari. In the same way, when we go a level down, if we are serving the sadhus who are dasis of Srimati Radhika, and if they, if, allow, if they allow us to serve them, of course, it's a, that is also not so easy to find someone that allows you to serve them. Mm -hmm. Many also, they try to hide. They live in their rooms, in their caves. And they don't want to see anybody because they want to concentrate or they don't want to be disturbed. But we know, we are so lucky to know one special sadhu that is living there 24-7 in service and 24-7 possible for us to come in and serve. So that we are very lucky. Now uh, Maharaj is going on. Ananda Swavadi Maharaj is explaining the different, different kind of the obstacles that Krishna had to face to help the bridge Vasis. And he is saying, we have already discussed that as a result of serving the foot dust of great souls, Prema is attained, and through Prema, Krishna is attained. Endless streams of Mahabhav, honey, flow from Shiradharani's lotus feet. Endless. Never ending. No beginning and no end. And wherever she places these lotus feet, there can be specks of dust and become separate, they become saturated, uh, immersed with the love juice known as Mahapa. Wow. This sentence is really special. 
endless streams of Mahabhav, of this divine highest expression of Krishna consciousness, from Srimati Radhika Sai, flow from Sri Radharani's lotus feet. And wherever she places these lotus feet, the particles of dust become saturated with the love juice known as Mahabha. So Mahabhava is not anything uh, dry. It is very juicy and it's full of love. And if you drink this love juice by serving the sattus who are living in this love juice, who are living in the ras, then something can happen in our bhakti. There can be no doubt about the great power to be. Uh, no, there can be no doubt about it that Diridari, Sri Krishna, is attainable by serving these specks of dust, since they have the great power to deliver this. Yes, Sri Matiradika is delivering her service, is delivering the service to Moha. Because that's the only thing that she exists on. That she's breathing in and out, that she's emanating is the service to have a love. And now Baba goes on to explain the Rasika secret about why Sri Krishna has been named Iridari in this paragraph. His name is Iridari, I will just summarize it. Because when he was in Vrindavan and Indra played some water games with Vrindavan and Brijvasis, then Krishna put up Iriraj on his left pinky finger. He wanted to spread the glories of Iriraj Govardhan because Giriraj is so dear to him and to Srimati Radhika and all bridge buses because there's many caves and many waterfalls and many beautiful fruits and plants and there's a lot of grass for the cows. And in these caves, there's many beautiful leelas happening. And Giriraj is so dear that all bridge buses are worshipping Giriraj because Krishna said to worship Giriraj instead of Indra. And that caused an ego problem. But afterwards, Giriraj was held for seven days and there were festivals of love and festival and exchanges of, you know, glances, of sidelong glances between Adarani and Moha. This Pushpabanaya festival started at that time because they had the age of about seven or eight and they, before they had not the chance to see each other. But now at that point, special mercy came because of this thunderbolt uh, service and raining services. <laughs> and Krishna was very, uh, he, he accepted uh, Indra's prayers when Indra came to apologize. He was very uh, pleased in a way because it gave him a chance to serve the bridge passes, come close with them. And they had such a beautiful, beautiful time there due, uh, due to this uh, rain. And, uh, but uh, even though Brahma also arranged, uh, uh, you know, this Brahma Mohana Leela 
he wanted to kidnap Krishna's cowherd spoils and brands and calves. Krishna was not so happy with that because that didn't cause any more prema. <laughs> that was just like, okay, I can become. No, he, he became the calves and he became the cows. But it was not uh, in, increasing so much the, the meeting ecstasy. So Baba is explaining this. And then he goes on to glorify the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. And he says also, uh, Krishna held the large Giriraj for seven days and nights out of his eagerness to sing Srimati Radhika. He was eager to get the sidelong glances. On the other hand, there is no other means to attain the relish of Shyama's sweetness than worshipping Sri Radharani's Uttas. Why is this? Because she has, she has the highest realization of service, of seva. And the Dasis who are serving he, her, they have this Seva Rupata, they get the Seva Rupatas. They get these bodies that are made uh, of servants, of, of loving exchanges. And they do it. And now when I meditated on the Seva Rupata, then I, I remember Srila Prabhupada who said, oh, we have to serve according to time, place and circumstance. And then it got a new dimension in my heart. Oh, yes, according to time, place, and circumstance means <laughs> according to how they can meet, how to reduce the obstacles that they can meet, and to increase the circumstances for their loving relish. These are the services of the Darcy's. And I really uh, appreciate Chila Prabhupada's expression. We have to serve according to time, place, and circumstance. And I really appreciate Purdy's mercy that he gave me so much of his mercy in my dry heart that I can now feel it in a rasika way, in a way how the does is served. Without worshipping the dust of Radha's lotus feet, Without taking shelter of Vrindavan, where her lotus feet are ever present, and without conversing with those whose hearts are filled with deep love for her, how can anyone enter into the Shyama ocean? This is one prayer of uh, Raghunathas Goswami of his father Sankalpa Prakash Stotra. And he's giving the gist, the essence, worshipping the dust, taking shelter of Rindavan, and taking shelter or listening and serving, conversing with those who are filled with deep love to Shema. We are lucky. I can only say we are very lucky. After this, Srila Thakur Mahashai says, Radhika Charana Shraya, Yekare Se Mahashaya, Tare Mui Jai Uli Hari. Anyone who takes shelter of Sri Radharani's feet is Mahashai, which means a great soul or Mahatma, or someone of very fine intelligence. Anyone who offers his mind to Sri Krishna or who is Krishna's devotee is a Mahatma. But Sri Krishna himself has said in Bhagavad Gita, Name bhakta jana parta mat bhaktas cha ye jana mat bhaktanam cha ye bhaktas 
Teme Bakja Jana Mata. O oh, Arjuna, he who is my devotee is not my devotee. He who is only my devotee is not my devotee. But he who is the devotee of my devotee is my true devotee. So just to be devotee of God is okay. But if we become the devotee of the devotees, if we become the dasi of the dasi of the dasi, the servant of the servant of the servant, then Krishna is really pleased. And as we know, when he becomes pleased, he will assign a contract that he will, that we will reach slowly but surely the ultimate goal. And we will find our place in our normal position in the pleasure giving potency. If the Lord's pleasure potency only slightly arises within the individual soul, then that soul attains the title of Bhakta and the presiding goddess of that pleasure potency is Sri Radha. Therefore, Sri Krishna is subjugated to the utmost by a one who takes shelter of Sri Radha's lotus feet. Hence, a devotee who takes shelter of Sri Radha Rani's lotus feet is the true Mahashaya. So the pleasure giving potency is Srimati Radhika. And that is where is our normal position. As Srila Prabhupada has concluded his last sentence in the whole of Bhagavad Gita. And again, I think for the third or fourth time, Baba is mentioning the subject of subjugation. Because we know that the Supreme Lord is not interested in any kinds of offerings. Actually, everything belongs to them. Everything belongs to Radha Mahal. But when we do offer our love and devotion, they will be, they will be interested in them. And when someone is in the shelter of Srimati Radhika and doing service, in this mood of serving the highest queen of his heart, the highest love, the highest mother of the universe, the highest lover, his highest lover, then Krishna is melting. Subjugation is not a material thing. It's nothing to do with power, only with the power of love. And this heart melting is when the tears are coming. And Krishna's tears are always coming when he thinks of his beloved Srimati Radhika. So automatically, if anyone has taken shelter of the Dasis, Anu Dasis, Anu Dasis, Anu Dasis, who are in her real service, then Nothing can go wrong anymore. It's only a time of purification, patience, development of humility. And then surely we will reach the ultimate goal. And therefore a devotee who takes shelter of Sri Radharani's lotus feet is the true Mahashoyi. Another meaning of the word Mahashai is relisher of the mellows of devotion. Someone who is relishing the mellows of devotion means someone who has also realized their own relation to Shimate Radhika, their own uh, 
Swarup, their own eternal soul body. And then they are relishing. And that moment, by doing service, the relish is starting. It's not that the relish is starting uh, by just uh, trying to understand. Relish is something that comes by feelings of attraction to some special lila or to any servants. And those who are eager to relish the mellows of devotion will be blessed with that relish by taking shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Radharam, who is the presiding goddess of fame. They are called Mahashai. Seeing how Srila Thakur, Naratam Dattas Thakur Mahashai, was such a relisher of devotional flavors, and knowing that he was exclusively surrendered to Sri Radha's lotus feet, he got this title from Shiva, Jiva Goswami Pad, Thakur Mahashai, Tara Mui Joy Boli Hari. Those Mahashais who have taken shelter of Sri Radharani's lotus feet are truly praiseworthy in this world. I praise them hundreds of times. Sri Naratam Dastako was so powerful in his devotion and his connection and his realization when his kirtan started. All would cry and get the goosebumps and fall or faint because from his mouth came the vibration of a dust filled with the foot dust of Shimati Radhika, with the service of the lotus feet of Shimati Radhika. And when he was singing these songs, he could make everyone remember Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu. And there was one great festival in this village, Keturi, where also Janava Ma and all the bhaktas of the second generation who had been witnessing the Lilas or Nitai Goranga. They were together and they did some installation of, of deities because that was the order of Janavama. And when they did Kirtan, when Thakur Mahashai did Kirtan with his all his feelings and all his um, bhav infused with his devotion, then Srimad Nittai and Goranga, they would jump and they would dance. And it is such a heart touching uh, scene that at that moment they, they came into the kirtan and everyone was just melting away and everyone was crying because they would be together with them after so many, many times of, of separation and crying in the memory of their togetherness. Shrivas Thakur was jumping. All of them were jumping and dancing together like in the old days of Shrivas Angam. So actually, what I feel after meditating and reading this, the love juice is coming from the bhaktas who are full of the love juice. And their lotus feet are giving this because they are the ones who carry the dust of Srimati Radhika's service, the prema dust. If we only, if I can only always keep it in my consciousness, that this is the truth and the reality, then my life will be so happy and more and more, these mercy particles of golden dust of Shimati Radhika 
are helping to do service, coming through the lotus feet of our Guru, our Guru Varga, and helping to develop the saintly heart and to have a feeling for who I really am. And with this feeling, if this feeling is, is growing, then also everywhere only Shimati Radhika will be received and served. And that is our natural position in this world and in the next and in the spiritual world. Then we are there and there's no more, uh, nothing to, to lose, only to gain. Jai Shila Naratam Das Thako Mahashai Ki Jai So, uh, please, I would like to listen from you. How are you uh, feeling about this beautiful song of Naratam Das Thako? How are you? Um, Hi, good day. I'm so good. Yes. Radhika Chara Nadino. Bhushana Kuriya Tani Anayase Bhave Giri Dari Radhika Charana Shai Ekare Se Mahashai Hare Hoi Chai Boli Hari Beautiful. Prema can come by just listening. We are so fortunate that Sumiti Didi is singing to increase our love and explaining the deep meaning of this song. We are lucky, Gurudev, that you put us all together in this service, that every day we are churning more and more. It's so uh, addicting. It's so high, high dose of prema you are giving us. Only lucky person can join this two classes. <laughs> not everyone. And we not give any pressure to anyone. Because that will has to be there. Glee has to be there for that. Mm. Right, you see. My old fancy, off is a greedy. My 